Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to episode number three of Fred Answers Question. And this week, question is coming from Antoni Castrillo, one of our ATCH member. So let me read the question to you. I'm trying to set up automatic deploys to droplet using Circle CI, but I'm hitting a problem with my firewall. Do you know how to dynamically add whitelisted IP addresses to a firewall? At the end, I want to build a process to add the Circle CI IP address to the whitelist when the job start and remove it when it's done. Thanks for the question, Anthony. I can resume that about how to dynamically manage the firewall. Let's dive in. First, I think Anthony approach is probably the most secure one, even if it means a little more automation on your side. So outside of using the dashboard to manage the rule from your firewall, there's two other options for you. First, there's API. You can do mostly what you want with the API, the things that it would do with the dashboard usually in your browser. The second option is the CLI. So we have a common line interface tool that is called DocTL. It's free, obviously. It's available out there on GitHub. And this is, to be honest, my preferred way to manage my different resources on DigitalOcean. So here, I created a droplet. I will try to connect to that droplet using SSH in my terminal. So if I do SSH, root, because yes, that's the default uh, username when you create a droplet. I'm gonna try to connect to my droplet. And as you can see, it's not working. So if I cancel the comment, I go back here, and I checked in networking, firewall, and I have my firewall here, firewall demo firewall. That is an awesome name, no? So as you can see, there is no inbound rules for SSH. So what I want to do, again, using the DocTL common line, I want to add a rule for me, my computer, so in our case, Anthony would be circle CI IP, to connect to the droplet. After installing the CLI, you're gonna to need to authorize your computer to connect with the token, your computer, to your digital ocean resources. So in my case, I don't have to do it, but the comment would be .tl hot hitness. So it's basically to initialize the authentication for your computer to be able to interact with your resources on digital ocean. So first thing first, I need to retrieve the firewall that are on my account because I need to get the IP to be able to add a rule to the firewall. So I'm gonna do doctl, compute firewall, and I'm gonna list all firewalls. So you're gonna see my first one, firewall demo firewall, is the one that I want to use. I'm gonna copy the IP, and my next command is gonna be doctl, compute firewall, I'm gonna add a rule. Actually, you can add multiple rules. In my case, I'm just gonna add one. So I'm gonna paste the ID from my firewall and the next option in bound, rules. And within the double quote, I'm gonna put the definition of my rule. So the first option is the protocol, TCP. Here, it's really about the connection. It's not about what type of inbound rules you're making. Like right now, I often type SSH when I do protocol for whatever reasons. Port 22, because it's SSH, and I need to put my own address. So in my case, it's 184.161.212.21. And once I click enter, my rule has been had to my dashboard. So if I go back here, I refresh the page. What are you gonna see now? You're gonna see my new rule here. And we define it as the type SSH because this is what I wanted to do, but I didn't have to define it. So right now, if I do again, go back with my command here, I do SSH root at, I'm gonna be able to connect to my computer. So now it's good. I had a rule that gave access to my computer only to that specific droplet that are using that firewall. One of the things you can do with firewalls is that you can use the same firewall for multiple droplets. So in our case, if I want to deploy different things on multiple droplets or interact with multiple droplets, 
I can have that firewall being assigned to multiple droplet. Also remember, if you have no firewall, quote unquote, connected to or associated to your droplet, every connection that is coming in or out will be accepted. So it's why the first thing you should always do after creating a droplet is probably to create a firewall. So now I created my rule. I want to remove it because I've done everything I needed to do with the droplet. So in my case, let's type the exact comment. But instead of using the add rules option, I'm going to use the remove rules option. If I click enter, my rule shouldn't be there anymore. So if I refresh here, you're going to see that the SSH is gone. And if I try to SSH into my droplet, it's not working anymore. One of the things that happen often is that if you only have one rule on your firewall, you cannot delete that rule. So if you try to delete it, you're going to get an error message. The second way to do that is to use the API. So one of the first thing I need to do to connect my computer again and being able to do some REST API requests is to go to API and I need to create a token. So let me create a token called firewall because you know, I'm super creative. So now I need to copy my co token and I'm gonna be a little bit lazy. So I'm gonna just export variable put the token and that's going to be useful for the next comments i'm going to do so here what i'm going to do first i'm going to curl to get again the firewall so i need to do the same action that i did before because now think that those are two separate examples. so now i'm calling the api to get a list of firewalls so i have the same information there uh, that i got before using doctl but I was not as nice in terms of like uh, visual. So one of the thing I can do, I'm using uh, command line, another tool, HTTP HI that I really like. It's a quote unquote, I guess, replacement for curl. And if I use that tool, I did the same exact comment. So instead of returning me raw JSON, it's returning me something way nicer to look at. So if I look, I'm looking for again, firewall, demo firewall and Again, the ID that I need is there. So if I go back here, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a rule so I can connect again to my machine. So now what I'm doing, I'm using curl to do a post. And as you can see right now, I'm using HTTPS API.digitalocean.com version two. I'm using the API, the firewalls API, and I need to mention on which firewall I want to apply my comments. So this is the ID that I recovered previously with my comments. And I'm using the dash roll endpoint. I'm sending the headers and the important part or the most important part is what I'm sending with my HTTP call. So again, a little bit of the same that I did previously. The only difference is that now it's some JSON that I'm sending. So I'm going to see the inbound rows that I want to add. The protocol is TCP, the port is 22 and the source, which is some addresses. In my case, it's only one, it's my IP. And if I run that comment, you will see that now, if I go back to my dashboard and if I refresh, you're going to see that I have my new rule there. So again, if I do Sage, you're going to see I am able to connect to my droplet. So now if I want to remove the rule that I just had, so I'm going to do the same exact comment, but I'm going to use delete instead. So I refreshing, go back to my browser, I refresh and boom, no more SSH uh, rule in my firewall. So if I try to connect again, it's not working. I use curl, the go to curl to do those examples, but you can use any tool you want. Uh, the API is probably the more streamlined way to do that because it's really raw access to the digital ocean resources. But again, the .tl, the CLI is really, I guess, a more nicer way to do it. So you can have access to the API documentation, it's available online. I uh, will put the link in the resources. It's at developers.digitalocean.com slash documentation. And you can also access to the CLI documentation, but also the repository. It's open source on GitHub at github.com slash digitalocean slash D-O-C-T-L. So with those in mind, whether you use the API or the command line interface, you are able to do some automation with the firewall.
And this was one example. But if you look at the documentation, you have access to a lot more. And this is the way to go to do any type of automation with your digital ocean resource. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future FAQ episode and add your comments to this episode below. Also, don't forget to send your questions using the link below. In the meantime, check our YouTube channels because there is a lot of amazing content. So on that note, see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,